Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. We are completing phase three. Boom. Welcome back, everybody, to Satisfactory. I'm the Bearded OG, and in this episode, the plan is to get started with trains. Yes, indeed. Uh, finally, we're going to start setting up trains. So, um, I have never set up trains ever <laughs> in this game, um, and I don't haven't really watched anybody else do it in detail. I've seen a little bit here and there, um, and so we're gonna. We're going to try uh, our first train setup. It's going to be fairly simple. It's basically just going to be a loop from here over to the, the space elevator and back. And then, of course, I'm sure we will be expanding that significantly as time goes on. So a couple things before we get started here. I have uh, I now have the manufacturer making um, adaptive control units. And if you look in the upper right hand corner, you can see we already have 78 out of 100. So we should be able to complete phase three in this episode. Um, easy peasy lemon squeezy so looking forward to that I just have the truck uh, right now making those deliveries and then in the future you know as we make deliveries to the space elevator we'll be using the train which is why I want to build it uh, the other thing I've done is I have um, expanded this area over here as I've mentioned to you guys a couple times now I think um, this is gonna stay open this is my staging area so that I can you know, set, you know, build blueprints and, and, you know, do layouts for new factories and stuff like that. So this will always stay open. Uh, I set up a bunch of lights, but I got something weird going on where the lights aren't actually shining and where the original lights were, they're still shining. So that probably could be fixed by logging in and out. Let's do that right now. Okay. So yeah, it looks like that, that did fix the problem. And actually too, when I logged out the game crashed, so there was definitely something going wrong. Um, these lights don't really light up the the very central area we could we could put a light there and one on that end for the ends and then just the center wouldn't be lit up very well let's do that not a big deal but um yeah uh, let's see the center tile is probably this one here just by eyeballing things All right, let's lock that there, and then we'll just slide it back to there. This does not need to be here, actually. And I don't... Hmm, can we run two connections off of there? We can't. Okay. So we'll just run that one to there. And then we'll do the same thing over here, and that'll at least light up the edges, and it'll just be right in the middle where it'll be a little darker. Not that it's ever so dark you can't see anyways, but... This, we're just doing this more for practical reasons, aesthetic reasons. All right, let's put that maybe right about there. That's perfect. Um, actually, no, yeah, that's good. Close enough. And we should be able to run a line off of there. Okay, so at least the perimeter is reasonably well lit up. Very good. Okay, so yeah, I've got this all set up now. My plan is to set up the train station over here in this section. So um, that is what we're going to do. We're all, oh, look at that. We're at 90. 90 out of 100 adaptive control units. We're almost there. It's amazing. Um, I'm probably going to hold off on finishing out the computer manufacturing facility, the, the architecture, until we can get the hover ability, which I'm hoping we'll be able to get in the next um, tier. I, I don't know if it comes in the next tier. I really hope that it does because that's going to make, you know, building and doing all that stuff so much easier if we can fl essentially fly. <laughs> I know I can, you know, fly in, in cheat mode, but I, and, and I, I'll, I'll use cheat mode for things like screenshots and I use it. Uh, I also use it when I'm designing stuff because here's the thing. 
in reality, if, if you're going to sit down to design something, you know, you're going to be using a, a computer program. Um, you know, it's going to be 3D and you'll, you know, your camera view will be able to fly around. So I do use the fly mode for designing but when i actually build it for real then i then i do it legit but once we have the the jetpack or well no we have the jetpack the hover ability you know then we can you know then we can build um with flying too which is going to really be nice okay anyway enough on that let's see here so i guess what we'll do is we'll start with the platform first um so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop in one of my foundation blueprints. Wait. These are actually, yeah, 4 by 4s Is that, that's too high though. There we go. That's what we want. <laughs> because my thought is this, um... We may have, we may utilize trucks or even tractors to deliver materials to the train station as opposed to running a bunch of conveyor belts to it. I just feel like that would be a cleaner way to handle it. And then when the train is, you know, gets its load, then it goes off to where wherever else it needs to go. Uh, in, in the first case here, it'll be the, um, the, the space elevator. So, you know, I, you, my understanding is you think of the train as, um, what? Yeah. Okay. There we go. Uh, you think of the train kind of as a, a long distance, you know, main artery to, uh, to supply other factories at other locations. Um, but yeah, I don't know. We'll see. You know, maybe I will run some conveyor lines into it, too. We'll just kind of have to see how that all works. I, I'm, like I said, I'm very new to trains, so this is going to be a new experience. If you guys have tips and tricks for me on on trains, uh, that is very welcome, too, of course. I'm just kind of figuring this out and making it up as I go. And there's a lot of fun in doing that. Little little frustration sometimes, too, but mostly it's fun. Okay, so let's just finish putting in these pads here. And that actually sticks out a little bit, but you know what? I'm, I don't think I'm going to worry about that at this point. <laughs> All right. Now, the train station itself is uh, down here. Train station. So how big is this thing? It's pretty good size. I want room, you know, in front of it, though, for truck stations and things like that. So I think we're going to want to build it out even further. And I'm thinking, you know, putting it in the, right about in the middle of this pad. Why don't we get ourselves a lookout tower for now? So we can get a little bit of a height here. Let's put another blueprint pad down. Maybe move it over to there. Okay, that's one, two, three, four, five, and one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, that's that's as in the middle as I can get it because it has an even number of tiles. You know what? Let's actually remove these here. So now all we have to do is just do that and now it's now it's in the middle let's grab the train station and we want to turn it this way and I guess pointing that direction and that should be in the center nope move it that way once that's in the center So the train station is basically kind of like the control center for all of the trains that are attached to it. It provides the power to the trains and it's it's basically the destin the departure point and the destination point on the track. Uh from what I understand. Okay, so let's hop down here. So so we have the one rail there. 
Now, how large are the rails themselves? Empty platform, an empty train platform for when you need to create some empty space. What does that mean? I don't know what that means. When you need to create empty space. Is it like a place to store idle trains? Is that what that means? Oh, this is kind of sticking out a bit, isn't it? Okay. So, obviously, we're going to want this... Oh, you know what? We probably want that rail to be right in the center of this tile. So that means we either need to slide it to the left or to the right. And I think I would rather have it go to the right, to my current right. Um, so we have plenty of room out here for staging, especially if we do decide to put a truck station up. So no... Uh, noticing that, what we're going to do is we're going to extend this out at another thingy. And we're going to... We're going to try and do this from down below. So I want the center of the track to be right here. So that's okay, that's correct there. And then we just need to nudge it over to Yeah, to there. Let's grab a railway and just attach that. Okay, that's gonna be pipes and steel beams. Railroad track is too short. Oh. Okay. Let's just extend this out that far. Railroad track is too short, but it's the it's the one piece. Oh. Well, that's how that works. Okay. Interesting. So, okay. So if I pull that as far that way as it'll go. And then I want to curve it to run. Here, grab one of the U down that way. Can I add a curve? Let's get up here so we have a little height. Here, let's try this instead. Let's, um... Run that out to there. Oh. All right. So can I um, do this? Railroad track has too sharp of a turn. All right, let's let's try this instead. Remember, this is my very first time doing this, so don't laugh at me. <laughs> so does it have to turn that that broadly? I mean, it, it's got to go like almost all, almost all the way to there to straighten back up the other direction. I have a feeling like it can be a little bit tighter than that. So let's let's fill that in. 
uh, you know, with conveyor belts, right, you, you have the rule of two. I wonder if there's a rule for these two. Let's, let's try a rule of two f full tiles. That's probably going to be too tight, but we'll try it. Um, okay, so let's start that. The, uh, why does it jump to there? Well, that's weird. Okay. I mean, I know I understand what it's doing. I just don't know why it's doing it that way. Okay, now can we... Too sharp a turn. Okay. Let's try three tiles. So we want to go back to there. Just out of curiosity. No, okay. So this is going to have to go back three tiles as well. Still too sharp. Okay. How about four tiles? Maybe it is indeed going to have to go to the point that it wanted to curve. All right. So let's put that right there. That works. I that that's a little bit tighter curve than what it, it wanted to do itself. So it looks like the rule is you have to be four tiles back in each direction to get your tightest curve. That's what it appears to me. It's possible maybe you could do it like on a three and a half kind of thing, but I think it's four is is what we're looking at here. <clears throat> Okay, so now that we know that, could I grab this um, and go to foundations? Oh, do I not have... I must not have the the triangular foundations purchased. I I think I was going to do that and then I didn't. We should have a decent collection of coupons built up here. Yeah, 25, that's not terrible. Let's print those out. We'll run over to the shop here. Guess I could have just built the shop, but that's all right. Hey, look at that. We now have 100 adaptive control units. Um, in, in fact, yeah, let's stop this guy. Stop! Stop the show! Stop that vehicle! Okay, disable autopilot. We have 12 extra adaptive control units. Those will... Actually, let's store those because rumor has it we're going to need a metric butt ton and then some of these for the next phase. Uh, well, you know what? Actually, I'm just going to keep it in here for now. In fact, we might as well just keep making them for now because we're gonna need him except for wait a second how do I still have automated wiring I thought I put the exact amount in there that we needed for a hundred of those obviously I didn't I over yeah we got uh, we got the circuit boards done hmm that's interesting I overproduced those okay well let's let it run out For now, um, the other thing we could do also is we could set up a a temporary. I, I gotta fix my storage here too. We could set up a temporary belt coming out of here. 
to, to just keep it going for now. We might as well, because we're going to need to make, like... You guys told me... Oh, shit. How many did you say? Something like 2,500 of those, or 1,200, or some, some massive, massive amount. So, we might as well just keep making them until we're ready to change things up. So, with that being said, this is all very temporary, so it's, I'm not going to worry about it being too terribly pretty here. Well, we'll just run it along the road here. Here is we're gonna go here and go up. Let's cross it over to here and go up and then down to here. I don't know if that's straight or not. Not quite, but it's going to have to be at an angle anyways just because of the way I set it up. All right, I'm just going to pick up these belts here. I might leave those there for the moment the conveyor pulls. Let's just manually stick those in here. There we go. Okay. So that way you can just keep feeding at least until these, uh, you know, until the automated wiring runs out. All right, here. Let's just plop down an awesome shop. Foundations. I want the corner ramps. No, I want... Wait a minute, what? Do we have just flat corner foundations? I, I'm not seeing those. That's weird. Why don't we not have just flat corner, you know, triangular foundations? These are all ramps. That's really bizarre. I don't think they would be under architecture. All right, well, um, I mean, we could probably do what we need to do with the inverted corners. That's just weird, though. Let's grab those and um, inverted ramp, corner ramp. No, I don't think that's, none of this is really what I'm after. So let's just buy that for now. All right, so what I want to do is I want to go to foundations. And I want the concrete corners. And I guess the one meter. kind of weird. What if we went with the the four meter? I mean from this angle it does it it doesn't matter. It looks the same. From this angle, I like that one better because that one's sticking way down below. It just looks kind of bizarre.
Okay, I, I guess I guess we'll go with that. Um, because there's I don't really have any other options. All right, so let's. Uh, yeah, let's trim those away, and then all of this. And then we'll wrap that around like so, like so, and like so. Yeah, see, it's uh, just because of the way those are curving. This end is, is wider than this end. And I don't think I can do anything about that. Or I could make this end narrower. Mm -mm. Well, okay. If we did that, I don't think I'm going to like this, but let's just try it. Maybe I will. Yeah, either way, that, that looks even worse in my opinion. So I think we'll go back to the way we had it before. Let's filter those. I almost think this one should just do that. Yeah, I, I think that's probably about as good as we're going to be able to get any curves with this setup. Okay. Um, I'll tell you what I want to do. Let's, let's put this on hold. And I want to run over to the space elevator and finish phase three. And then that, that way we can start working on the next tier with the highest priority being getting the hover pack. Okay. Let's, um... Actually, let's just leave those right there because then they can just feed right in to the elevator. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. We are completing phase three. Boom. See ya. I love that. <laughs> uh, all right. Fan friggin tastic. Let's take a look at. Oh, we don't have a hub over here. Right. The hub. Uh, okay. Why aren't these feeding back in there now? Oh, okay. So we don't need adaptive four thousand. Holy shit. Okay, so you guys were saying that I need a whole bunch of adaptive control units to make one of one of whatever the hell these things are. It doesn't tell me what these are. So we are finished putting adaptive control units directly in here. I see. Okay, so let's uh, just pick those up. It is not my intention at this point anyways. To continue using the truck for these deliveries, but let's just hook it back up for the moment anyway. Because maybe we will. We'll see. Uh, we definitely don't need this anymore because we're using actual packaged fuel. Um, so let's just pull this coal out of here. 
Oh, I don't have room for it. I'll stick the coal in here. So that way it doesn't go to complete waste, just mostly waste, because that's hardly going to put a dent in anything. But it's better than throwing it in the trash, though, right? Okay. All right, guys. Um, I will meet you back at the hub, where we will take a look at the next tier, tier seven. All right. Let's go ahead and see what we got going on for tier seven. Bauxite refinement. A blender. Interesting. Aluminum scrap, packaged aluminum solution, aluminum ingots. Okay. Logistics mark five. 780 resources per minute. That requires all clad aluminum sheets. So that means, of course, we have to do this one before we can do that one. Hazmat suit. That allows us to go around uranium. Aeronautical engineering. Drones. Nice. Hover pack. That's the one we want. Okay. So, um... We're going to need Alclad uh, aluminum sheet for that, too. So I guess bauxite refinement needs to be our first milestone. All right, so let's select this, and then we want to load up all of this stuff. That was, uh, I think that was rubber, right? And we're going to need 50 computers. Well, eight now. Okay, so let's grab some rubber. And we need more heavy modular frames. I have a couple of those. And we'll have to also go pull some computers. Uh, let's see, rubber. Well, that one's 500 rubber. And we need more motors as well. Okay, so we need about 135 motors and 110 more rubber. That'll do that. And then motors are here. Just grab three stacks of those. That gets us our motors and our rubber. Okay, so we just need eight computers. We'll pull those off of the line over here. And you know, now that I th now that I know we're not putting um, adaptive control units directly into oh whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Into the space elevator. I think what I'm gonna do is stop this production over here because we're gonna have to build an actual production line for that. Um, this game, man, I just, <laughs> it really ramps up in the, in the end game here. So we got our work cut out for us. All right, let's go back over here and I'm going to let it finish out. Oh, actually though, is it already out of... Automated wiring, because if it's out of automated wiring, then we're done anyways. Yeah, it looks like it is. Okay, yeah. Uh, well. It doesn't... Uh... Wait, what? How come it hasn't pulled the rest of those in? Uh, where did that go? I bet you those weren't actually there. That must have been a graphical glitch. 
because they're not in my inventory. So it is indeed out. Fair enough. Okay, so let's take all of this down now. And we are finished using this manufacturer for adaptive control units anyways. And um, I don't know how practical it's going to be to continue using a temporary setup considering how involved, you know, the rest of these things are going to be. So most likely we're going to have to set up dedicated production chains to create all that stuff. Um, all right, let's put all those in there. I don't... Yeah, I'll carry one stack of circuit boards with me, I guess. How are you looking? Yeah, you got a ways to go before I get that. I, I got to get those things hooked up to permanent storage. Well, and, and we got to do that for the computers now, too, for that matter. All right, so let's pull, whoop, uh, let's pull this down. And that down here. Actually, you know what? I'll do all that later. I don't need to do all that on camera with you guys. Um, oh shit. Okay, we need eight of these in total. I might make the... I might make the final four just manually. Probably be faster. Alrighty. Bauxite refinement, here we come. Milestone reached. Quartz and bauxite scanning unlocked. A new generation of basic aluminum parts is now available, which can be constructed from bauxite after a complex process of refinement. The blender will be used in future processes. All right, cool. So the blender. Let's take a look at here. So that needs some interesting things. The blender is capable of blending fluids and combining them with solid parts in various processes. It takes both conveyor belt and pipe inputs. Okay, so it's kind of like a packager in that sense. Um, but apparently we don't need that first because we need, uh, we need aluminum casing and radio control units just to even make this at all. So if we want to make, what is it that we need for, we need to be able to make alclad aluminum sheets. All right, let's see what that involves. Alclad aluminum sheet. Oh, we just need an assembler. So it takes copper and aluminum ingots. Okay, so what does aluminum ingots require? A foundry, silica, and aluminum scrap. Okay, what does aluminum scrap require? A refinery with aluminum solution and coal. Oh, so that creates a, a byproduct of water. That's interesting. Okay, so what do we need for aluminum solution? Actually, it's alumina solution we need a refinery and and well I don't packaged aluminum I don't think we need I don't think we need it to be packaged to, to make the scrap yeah we can just take it straight in a refinery All right, so, yeah, several steps to this. So let me, let me, let me look, think about this again. Okay, so this requires aluminum ingots and copper. Aluminum ingots requires aluminum scrap and silica. Aluminum scrap requires alumina solution and coal with a byproduct of water. 
and alumina solution requires bauxite and water. And that, oh wow, that creates silica as a byproduct. And then I'm, I'm assuming we just use a normal mining machine to get the bauxite. Okay. Yeah, that's gonna um, that's gonna require some planning, obviously. And it looks like we have we need a refinery for that. We need a refinery for that. We need a foundry for for that, and an assembler for that. So two refineries, a foundry, and an assembler to make the all-clad aluminum sheets. Alrighty then. Well, we know where we have a couple of bauxite deposits. One's way up on that that cliff, you know, way up there. And then there's also one up by our conveyor road. And I think, I think we can scan those from here. I think they're both pure nodes too. Let's find out and see what happens here. Yeah, that's a, a pure node and that's a pure node. And we got one over here too, that's a normal. All right, it would kind of make sense, I think, probably to tap into this one because we it's right next to our conveyor road. So we already have a conveyor road to bring it in. And I think I might have to do... Well, we'll probably need to bring it in on this side because this side is... Well, no, I guess we could go up higher on that side too. Right, we're going to run into a problem right here because I've I've diverted that coal. So if we're going to bring it in here, we're going to need to just add another row to the top of that, which of course we can do. I mean, that can I don't think there's any limit to how high you can actually make those. Practically speaking at some point though, the weight would overwhelm the, you know, the bottom sections, but of course the game doesn't care about that. I kind of make that work in my practical mind by just thinking, you know, this is a space-aged game way into the future, so maybe materials have some sort of anti-gravity function built into them or something. I don't know. <laughs> Either that or they're just strong as shit. Uh, could be. Anyway. All right, guys. Well, um, we have a lot to do. Oh, my goodness. We have a lot to do. So what I think I'm going to do is... Um, I think I'm going to put the train station on hold because my absolute number one priority right now is to get the hover, uh, the hover pack. I want, I want that uh, because it's just going to make life so much easier for us moving forward. Um, even, you know, for building out the you know rest of the architecture on this building and so forth. So I'm going to plan out the whole bauxite aluminum production chain thing. And once I have that figured out, I'll bring you back in the next episode and we will start building it so that we can work towards getting our hover pack. And uh, yeah, so that is it for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment, share the video, and we'll catch you in the next episode. Goodbye.